All right, window seat on a flight to Hawaii. You get comfy and are about to have the flight of your life. As it goes on, you look out to the darkness and can't even see the clouds as you're cruising above the ocean. You notice that the flight attendant is asking everyone to shut the shades on the windows, including yours. The reason is that they want the passengers to be comfortable with the lighting. If an emergency happens, it'll take your eyes more time to adjust if there is light coming from the outside of the plane and the inside. If a power outage happens and the shades are shut, it'll be easier to act since your eyes are adjusted to the surroundings. Every second counts during times like this. Passengers are asked to leave the shades open during takeoffs during the day. And during a day flight, the cabin crew also asks passengers to leave the shades open so that the natural light outside illuminates the plane's interior. Now, there has never been an incident in history where a phone's signal interference caused any problems during a flight. The idea is that when you're thousands of feet in the sky, your phone signal will bounce off different towers and the signal will get more powerful. This normally won't be a problem in mid-flight when the pilots aren't doing much work. The real concentration and critical moments are during the landing and the takeoff. The phone signals will just flood the networks on the ground, which will make the pilot's job just a little bit more annoying. Now, it seems to bother you that the windows on the plane are so small given the improved technology over the years. The windows on airplanes are so small relative to the size because they need to maximize the hull between them and increase the strength of the frame. The overall frame over the plane is actually at its strongest if there aren't any windows at all. Metal fatigue occurs over time, originating at the weak points of the plane. The bigger the windows, the weaker the frame. You lift the shades just to take a peek outside. You're so far from the ground, it looks like you're actually closer to space than Earth, but you're only 7% the distance from where astronauts go. Planes can technically go higher than that, but they can't because it won't be good for the passengers and the crew members. Planes can sometimes cause lightning storms during a cloudy flight, but don't worry, you're safe. The static creates lightning whenever a plane passes through, and it can strike while it's moving. But over the years, technological advancements improve the quality of airplanes. The electrical current of lightning is distributed throughout the aluminum structure so that it doesn't affect the controls. Some people start panicking on the flight. All the windows are shut because the flash of lightning is disturbing for many people who are trying to sleep. One person panics a little too much and tries to open the exterior door in mid-flight. Well, this is almost impossible to do because of internal pressure. You'd have to be a superhero to open it up. The plane exit the cloud cluster back into normal sky. The flight attendants are bringing out some dinner. You pull out your tray and wipe it clean. It's reported that this is the dirtiest part of the plane. Nope, not even the toilet. After cleaning it, they serve some chicken and little veggies on the side. The smell is incredible, but when you take a bite, it somehow doesn't taste as good. It's because the difference in air pressure and the low humidity alters your taste buds, especially the sweet tooth part and the salty buds. Only a few hours left until you arrive at your destination. You wake up, and the flight attendants ask you to put on your seatbelt and tuck in your tray. The plane lands and parks. You're the last one out and make your way to the baggage claim. The conveyor belt rotates, but you don't see your bags. When flights lose your baggage, there's a pretty good chance that they're still in the location where you traveled from. Occasionally, they can end up on other flights due to human error. The flight agencies can recover your luggage if you file that they're missing. You read the signs on the flight destination screen showing the arrivals and departures. These signs are written in three specific fonts so that people can read them from afar while walking. As you continue walking, you stare out into the large window panels. These windows are made of special material. It makes you feel like you're closer to your plane than when you look through regular ones. You notice they're driving the bags to the planes for loading and refueling them before takeoff. They fill up the planes with just enough fuel to take them to their destination, rather than pumping them with a little extra. That's because they need the planes to be as light as possible, since fuel is heavy. You head outside and feel the hot wind of Hawaii in your hair. It's only a matter of time before you're dipping your feet in the ocean water. You try to find a taxi, but they're all taken. 
taxis are yellow because a salesman in 1907 had a lot of cars in his lot and didn't know what to do with them. He decided to start a taxi business to make use of those idle cars. To make them stand out from the rest of the cars, he decided to color them yellow. According to a survey, yellow cars are the easiest to spot on the street. School buses also use yellow to stick out from the crowd. Colors are important in our daily lives, just like the colors of a traffic light or the flashy red color of a stop sign. But it wasn't always red. In the early 1900s, the red dye wasn't consistent and faded over time. So they used yellow instead. In the 1950s, they finally started using a red color that didn't fade away and white lettering for stop. Well, you finally find a cab and enter. You're so tired and decide to shut your eyes for a bit. Scientists still don't know why we need sleep, but it has to do with resting our brains so that we can function for the next day. You get stuck in traffic and are jolted up by the sound of honking cars. You look out the window and see the ocean filled with people. Instead of waiting in the taxi, you pay your fare, grab your bags that the airline finally found, and head down to the beach. You dip your feet and pick up a large seashell. You put it against your ear to hear the ocean. Of course, you don't exactly hear the ocean, but different frequencies of the ambient noise inside the shell echoing around. The sound just happens to resemble the ocean. You take off your shoes to feel the sand on your feet, but it's so hot that you tiptoe your way to a shady spot. The sand absorbs the heat and can retain it. 85% of sunlight can also reflect off sand and water. You open your bags and get out your towel and lay it on a soft spot. Even though you're sitting in some shade, you're still at risk of getting a sunburn. So you apply some cream to protect yourself. SPF stands for Sun Protection Factor, and the numbers mean how long it will take for the UV rays to affect your skin. After applying it, you dip in the water for a bit and see a large volcano in the distance. The sand around is somewhat black. This is because Hawaii is located in a volcanic range. The color of the sand is determined by the location, environment, and source. Most of the sand in the world is made up of quartz and trillions of particles that used to be rock. The deserts of the world used to be forests millions of years ago. But due to climate changes, everything turned to sand. Some parts of the Sahara Desert still have some geological formations suggesting that there used to be large rivers in the region. Not to mention the discovery of aquatic dinosaurs found in those ancient dry rivers. You're finally settled and sipping on a punchy drink. You see some people surfing the large ocean waves. Surfing was technically invented in Hawaii and later became a popular water sport worldwide. You hang out for a bit until sunset and then head to your hotel to take a long shower. Water was not invented in Hawaii, although it is surrounded by it. It's, you know, an island.